All right, let's look at these three paintings, kind of the same kind of subject matter. And these are all um, painted by Matisse. So when you look at this first painting that Matisse did in 1894, you see that Matisse, you know, look at all the stuff he painted in this painting. You have a young woman sitting here, look like she's reading something. We don't know what, you just kind of get an idea. You can see a little bit of the book. He has his cabinet door open, so you kind of want to know what's inside of there. You see some something, some kind of paper in there. Look at all this stuff up here on top of this dresser. I mean, look at everything going on in this painting that he painted. Look at this wallpaper here, all the designs on it. And this wallpaper over here, it has designs too. You can tell this um, is supposed to be um, some paintings on the wall. He has three paintings on the wall. And this one down here is probably also supposed to represent a painting, but he has it flipped backwards. So now we don't know what the painting might be of. So now we're curious of, I wonder what it could be. So that's um, Henri Matisse painted in 1894. We come over four years later in 1898, and you still have the same subject matter. You have a, a woman sitting there, and she's reading something. You can tell she's reading. You have this table here, and it has um, a glass um, jar on it. It looks like some fruit on it. There's some kind of table here with something on top of it. Not sure what it is. Doesn't have a lot of um, shape to it. I mean, it has a lot of shape to it, but it's not really defined. You can't really tell what it is. But once again, Henri Matisse put like a painting up here. We don't know what it is because we don't see enough of it. Let's go over to 1908 now. Now look at Matisse's style. Same subject matter, right? You have a young woman sitting here. But now let's look at his style. Now let's look what he's changing up here. He still has a very, this one here has a very busy background, just like he did in this one. But you can't really kind of tell what exactly what's going on. Like, you know there's got to be a wall here, and this must be a table here because there's items sitting on it. But you can't really tell a whole lot what's going on on this table. You know that there's candles, you know there's some kind of um, platter here, some kind of dish here, you got some fruit, but you can't really tell a whole lot of where that table edge is and where the floor is down here somewhere because it's all kind of the same value and tone going on. But this here, and I'll look, look out the, I'm, I think this is a painting because it looks like it's a frame here and not a window. So when you look at this, you see, you know, it's a painting of a landscape. You got a building back here, um, back in the background is a blue sky. You got your green grass and some trees that he um, painted in white, some darker greens here. But now let's look at color theory. Let's look at what Matisse did. On this one here, most of his colors, when you look at this, it's shades of red and green. You have green here. You have red here. You have a reddish brown cabinet. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is complementary colors of red and green. Let's look over here. Here's your red. Here's your green. Just like you see over here, red and green. He's also adds, so those are two complements to red and green. But you also have violet and yellow. You have these shapes down here that are um, painted in with um values of violet and the complement is yellow so there's your yellow there's your yellow here you have a yellow frame up here so this here is, has two complements in it it's the red and the green and the yellow and the violets the center one look at that one there the whole painting basically is done in shades of violet and yellow so you have all these beautiful shades of violets going on here. You have yellow here and there um, to pick up on the, the contrast of the complement colors of yellow and purple. Down here, he even has some yellow in here to add more to it. So, and over here, if you really look, he actually added some red and green. Now you can pick any kind of colors you want, but Henri Matisse was real. When you look at his paintings, you can tell he really looked at color and how to use them. So once again, he has a little red and green here. Most of his 
all shades of violets, different shades of violet with a little bit of yellow. So looking at these three different um, forms of art, all done by Henri Matisse, and you see how his style is changing, but not color, not color theory. So let's come down to his, all right. So as Matisse got older, he um, developed some health issues, but he wasn't gonna give up being an artist. So he started doing, um, at that time, it was a very new art form and it was called collages. But once again, let's look at color theory. So you got um, complements color of blue and orange. There's your blue and your oranges here. Red and green. There's your red and green over here. This is more of a purpley red color, a red violet, but means it is still a reddish violet color. He put green back here, uh, like an offset kind of color of green. So he once again played with the um, complementary colors. And over here, you have your three primary colors. You have red your blue, and your yellow. But also, mostly when you look at that, you see that he has blue and orange. You see most of it is blue and orange. Also in the color world, we were talking about warm and cool colors. On this one here, it's very much warm colors. You see all your oranges in here and reds and this yellow. But um, Justin, just like what you did when you um, was doing the um, still life painting, how you picked everything that was warm colors and then you just did one um, pop out of, I'm sorry, you did it the other way. You had all cool colors and then you had one pop out of a red apple and it really made it stand out. That's what these blues are doing now. These blues are really popping out because most of this whole thing was done with warm colors. So adding those blues pops it out, plus the blue is a complement to all these oranges behind it. So Matisse was so known for his colors. So let's move on down. All right, so one of the last thing he created was called the snail. And this, I th if you saw the video, you saw how big this um, actual cutout really is. It's a huge um, cutout. But this is called the snail. And even though it seems very simplistic, um, you know, some people look at this and say, oh, my, you know, my little sister could do better than that. So, okay, maybe on a good day, a, a three, four, five year old could do this. But you have to look at it closer than that. Once we talked about all the colors, and now this is one of the last pieces that Matisse created. Look at the colors again. Look at the the way he laid them down. So this big block of blue is the biggest um, color on there, but he has it touching the oranges, which is the second biggest color block on here when you look at all the oranges. You have your greens and your reds connecting over here. You have your violets and your yellow orange, your yellows over here. And then just one black shape here to help offset the balance of everything but going back to the complements you have your blue and your oranges you have your greens and your reds and you have your yellow and your violets this once again is called the snail so looking at this and then looking at the other um especially in the beginning of his work um the pain the three paintings i showed you or do some more research on your own but I need you to tell me, what do you think Henri Matisse meant when he said, there is nothing more difficult for a truly creative painter than to paint a rose? Because before he can do so, he has first to forget all the roses that he ever painted. So on the handout is that quote, I need you to tell me, what did Henri Matisse mean? After looking at some of these, um, pieces of artwork by Henri Matisse, what do you think he meant by that quote?